Hi, Dennis here. We get letters and we get questions. A question we got recently was, why does K, the letter K in knife, remain silent? Oh, there are many other words like that. Uh, knife, knot, knuckle, knickerbocker. It's a good question. Um, the answer is simple. At one time, the letter K in the word knife was not silent. It was, it was pronounced. It was kniff. Yes, kniff. The word was not originally English. The word came from uh, the Nor one of the Norse languages. Uh, at one time, England was inhabited and occupied and ruled by Vikings. Yes, Vikings who spoke a language where the K is pronounced. Uh, soon after that time, even, there was a king of Norway, Knut. Yes, Knut, who was king of Norway, Denmark, and England. Um, after that, uh, when the English became independent of the uh, Norse world, the, uh, that part of England continued to pronounce K in their words like Knight, Knigget. But eventually, along with many other uh, gradual changes in the English language, the K became silent and the spelling never changed. One thing about English is when the uh, pronunciation changes, often the spelling does not. So, we have Knut the Great, and um, with his K word, K, even though it's usually spelled with a C, it's still Knut the Great. Another great, Alexander the Great, can be related to a silent K word, not, as in the Gordian knot. Um, legend has it that when Alexander the Great arrived in Phrygia, he went to the capital city of Phrygia. At that time was just a province, satrap, of the Persian Empire, but had once been a kingdom unto itself. There was a prophecy that any man who can undo the knot of Gordia, the Gordian knot, would become the next king. Many people tried, many people failed. Alexander had a novel approach to undoing the Gordian knot. He took out his sword and cut it in half, thereby undoing the knot. And yes, he became not only king of Phrygia, but king of all of Persia. Today, the Gordian knot refers to a very complex, convoluted problem. Often, when you talk about the Gordian knot, the solution to the problem is unconventional outside the box, demonstrated by Alexander the Great. Thinking outside the box, well, I'm not going to undo the knot, I'm just gonna cut it. So in modern times, a Gordian knot refers to a problem that is very complicated. Not unlike nearby Phrygia, Syria, Aleppo, the Gordian knot of the Middle East. Uh, right now, there is a complicated and convoluted circumstance with many people, many sides, many interests fighting in Syria and it is a challenge to understand who is friends and enemies with whom. If anyone out there can explain the Gordian knot of Syria, I would be impressed. But so far what I know is that um, during the recent, five years ago or so, Arab Spring, the people who were dissatisfied with the rule of Assad in Syria decided to revolt. The ensuing fighting uh, brought in many different sides. You've got the rebels, the rebels are not just one group, but many groups, including Al-Qaeda. And, of course, ever since the Cold War, 
the United States has been opposed to the rule of Assad. So here we have Al-Qaeda and the United States basically with the same enemy and fighting on the same side. Well, thanks to uh, Al-Qaeda Al changed its name in Syria, thanks, so it wouldn't look like America's fighting with Al-Qaeda, but they are. Also, um, the Kurds in northern Syria are fighting against the Assad regime and fighting ISIS. ISIS is fighting the Assad regime. So the United States opposes the Assad regime and ISIS. The Kurds are helping, carrying the, really the load of fighting Assad and ISIS. The Russians came in to help their old friend Assad, again, back to the Cold War. Uh, so you got the Russians and Assad fighting ISIS and against the rebels who the United States are helping the Kurdish rebels in northern Syria, which borders southern Turkey. The Kurdish rebels in southern Turkey are also fighting, but not fighting the Assad regime. They're fighting the Turkish government. So the United States friends in Syria are enemies of our friends, the Turks. The Turks are fighting the Kurds in southeastern Turkey. And officially, the United States considers them terrorists. But the same Kurds in northern Syria are freedom fighters. And then there's Iran. Uh, why would Iran be involved? Well, here's more religion. Al-Qaeda, of course, uh, believes that no Muslim country should have a secular government, which is Assad's a secular government. Uh, Al-Qaeda wants theocratic much like Iran, but the Al-Qaeda people are Sunni, and the Assad family are Alevi, which is a group of Shia. Although the most people in Syria are Sunni, the government is run by Alevi, Shia, and Iran is backing their old friend, the Shia Alevi president of Syria, Assad. Is this not a Gordian knot? Is th isn't this a Gordian knot? <laughs> That's a better way to say it. Well, anyway, so thanks for the uh, question. K, silent, because of the Norse influence on the English language. Thanks for the question. Talk to you again later. Adios, muchachos.